All right, so I'm going to take you through the mechanical aspects of Purple Haze real quick. Uh, starting at the front, we have the bodywork, the nose cone. This is a crucial aspect of the vehicle as it is required that the entire front cockpit area is enclosed off for competition. Um, it also has to be strong enough so that if it, you do hit a cone, hopefully you don't, um, none of it breaks off. Moving further back, we have the first the suspension bits um, and we see the big long control arms here. Um, these are what connect the wheel to the frame itself. Um, they don't support them, but they keep them attached so the wheels don't go wandering off into the next field over. Um, however, what does bring the wheels and keep the car above the ground is the suspension system. Um, so you can see here on this one, we opted for a pull rod style suspension system. So you can see the pull rod here, um, and that's connected to the top member of the control arm and connected to a very small rocker at the bottom there, which connects the motion, the upward motion from the wheel into our shock sitting right on the frame right there. Uh, moving outboard a little bit more, we see our wheels. We have our wet tires on right now. We're using 10 inch Hoosier um, slick tires, usually in the dry. Um, and hidden inside there is our nice custom made upright and hub, um, which basically takes the wheel and mates it into the control arms, making sure everything's hooked up properly um, and provides proper mounting points for our control arms, steering links, and brake rotors. Um, moving a little bit further back, we have our steering system. It's a little bit hard to see because it is right behind this front nose cone here, but we have a nice dashboard so we can see all the telemetry, see if any warning signs are going on this vehicle, hopefully not, um, and have our nice custom-made steering wheel right here. Um, and just like any other steering linkage, we have, you know, turn left, you go left, turn right, you go right. And it goes into a nice steering rack at the bottom of the car, it turns the wheels. All right, now moving on to the rear of the car, we're going to start with the motor. For this particular vehicle, we're using a chain to take the power from the motor and transfer it over into the differential. And the differential is going to distribute the power to either of the wheels. So you can kind of see the differential there right behind the uh, rear brake light um, and then that the power from the differential is going to come through our drive shafts which is right here hook in to the wheel hub which is centered inside our upright and drive these nice small rear, rear, rear wheel excuse me um, and then to make sure that our car is going nice and straight there's no rear steer because that is illegal for our competition we have an added member Kind of like the front where you have the steering links, we, back here we have a tow rod which makes sure the rear wheels stay centered and straight at all times um, so that way the car is not walking around while driving. Kind of carrying on from that, we have a cooling system. The cooling system is particularly useful for this car as it is needed to cool both the inverter um, and motor of the vehicle make sure those stay nice and cool and make sure the car is working at its optimum. This whole system is plumbed using standard traditional automotive hosing and uses a fan to kind of help that airflow run through it and keep the car nice and cool. Alrighty, and now we're going to talk about some of the mechanical safety aspects of this vehicle. Uh, the main one is be careful of any moving parts, uh, particularly the motor chain differential. You don't want to stick your hands in there, especially if the car is moving, turned on, or anything those lines. Um, along the same line of things, if the car is in ready-to-drive mode, stay away from standing directly in front of either the wheels or the car itself. The last thing we want is somebody to get run over. It's also important to note that there are many sharp edges on this vehicle. So when you're moving it, touching it, working on something, be careful of the sharp edges. Zip ties and carbon fiber especially tend to just give you a nice little paper cut. Other thing is, if you're moving the car by picking it up, Make sure you're grabbing on to a solid point on the frame or the control arms. You don't want to pick it up by the inside of the tire or any component that's been bolted onto the frame. 